Sonicwares.com. This is the first video of NAM that I'm doing. So Sonicware is getting the uh, the inaugural. Oh my God, Ken is probably going to ruin this video, but <laughs> so any any and all apologies for that. Uh, why don't you tell us what you have here? Yeah, so here we have the uh, live in. Uh, it's a sequencer. It's from Sonicware, um, our company. It's sort of uh, I would call it kind of a synth focused groove box. It's a 64 step sequencer and it's got four um, oscillator modes. It's got a warp mode that just crossfades between two different uh, waveforms. It's got a tack which um, cuts between one waveform and another. So if you want a like a harsh oscillator attack and then a mellower one for the second part of the sound. Um, and then it's got a morph which is like a wave table that's warping between two 8-bit waveforms. And then there's an FM mode as well. Uh, sounds really good. Uh, yeah, so um, the main idea here is that you can record a 64 um, uh, step sequence. And then once you have that dialed in, say you start with your bass line and you want to do a new part, you can record it to one of the four uh, looper slots. So it's an audio based looper. So you just play it through, it will record that to a looper slot. And then you can clear out the pattern. Save that pattern real quick, and then um, you can work on a, a second pattern, and then record that to a looper, and then work on your third pattern, record that, so then you can have those three parts, and then one of the looper slots is external. So say you have like a Volca drum, or any other outboard, um, you know, thing that can sync up with MIDI, and you can have that um, record uh, a loop as well. And the, the loop start and end can be quantized however you like. So you can have it start recording the loop right on the one, even if it's an external uh, synth. So that provides you a lot of flexibility. And this was really designed to work with, uh, you know, with friends, with other synthesizers, um, especially the Volca series because it's got the same power adapter. So if you have a Volca set up already, if you have the Volca mixer, for example, you can power it uh, live and straight from that. It's also battery powered, so it doesn't actually need any uh, external power at all. Uh, it just runs off a couple of AA batteries. Um, yeah, so that kind of gives you an idea. What's the battery life like on, on when you're running it from batteries? I'm not sure. I know the ELZ-1, this is just a prototype, so we don't have that quite nailed down. I know the ELZ-1, which is similar hardware, runs for, I don't know, about four to six hours. Um, so it depends on how cranked you have the volume, of course. But yeah, conservatively, four hours, uh, maybe something around six. Okay, let's let's take a listen to it. Yeah, sure. So um, right now I have it in memory mode. So if I tap this twice, that'll lock it into memory mode, and then you can have as many. You know, you can have four banks. Uh, I think it's actually eight banks of 16 different sounds built into it. So right now we're just on bank one. So right here you can hear this is the warp sound. I can't hear it, but uh, you can use the crossfade to fade between two different waveforms. Okay. And then you can also use uh, the second preset we have is using the attack mode. Um, and what this one does is you have two different waveforms and then you can set how quickly it's switching between one and the other. And if you set it real low, it's real subtle, but if you set it somewhere around here, you'll hear it switch between one and the other. So that'll give you kind of that real quick attack um, and give you kind of video gamey type sounds. Uh, and then the third preset I have uses the morph mode, which is like your wavetable type synth. Oh, cool. And you can make it go real fast, or if you just want to do a pad, you can make it real, go real slowly through the wavetable. And then if you want to control attack and decay, they're just right here. That's kind of the idea is we wanted to have enough knobs that you could get to the functions that you wanted to really quickly. So if I want to make it a pad sound, I can do that. Or if I want to make it, you know, a, a quicker sound, I can, I can just dial the attack in. And how many wavetables was in it? Uh, so you can, uh, there's just a bunch of preset waves in here, so you can choose one or another. Uh, there's a whole bunch of user slots, so let's see. Yeah, there's some uh, built-in pre preset ones, and then I think there's something like 60 user ones. 
Um, so it's kind of split between the preset ones and the user slots, but there's 127 waveforms total, and then you can choose between, you know, with the two waveforms, you can choose one of those 127. And we got the filter here. Here, you can sweep that. Yeah, sure. And then if you turn up the Q a little bit, And there might be uh there might be uh the oscillator might be controlling the filter. Okay, give me one well. second. Yeah. What I'll do is um I'm gonna take the mic level down. Okay. And this way you'll be able to Cool, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yep. I'll Go ahead. turn that on. Yeah, so you can yeah. do that now. Actually, I can just turn that off. Uh, yeah. Yep. Yeah, so let me turn that off. And it's got a full pattern sequencer and everything? Uh-huh, yep. So, so, yeah, do you want to hear the filters yep. again? Yeah, sure. Kickstarter and price point and all that good jazz. Yeah, so the Kickstarter is going right now. Uh, the price point on the Kickstarter for just the unit is uh, 160. Uh, I think it's maybe 163 is the conversion from yen. Um, so that's a really good deal. It's only about ten dollars more than the uh, than your basic like polka, and you get the full sequencer and you get the looper and it plays with all your other polkas if you have some. Uh, so yeah, that price. When did it go up on Kickstarter? When did that go live? Uh, I think it went up maybe about a week ago. Okay. Um, so yeah. So there's still time fresh. to get in on that. Oh yeah, definitely. It's gonna be running for I think 40 days. Do you know what the um, so, yeah. what, what's the price point on it when it hits retail? We're not super sure on that quite yet. Um, okay. So this is your opportunity to get one at this price. But yeah, 160 sounds like an awesome price. Yeah, 160 is a really good deal. I don't know how much more it will be uh, at retail. So. Very cool. Yeah, and then we also have a uh, bundle as well. If you're interested in the ELZ-1, which is, this is uh, our third year bringing it to NAMM. Uh, it just released last year. Um, it's got a whole bunch of different synthesizer modes. It can do 8-bit sounds, but internally it, it can do much more than that. Um, so, yeah. 
Uh, so there's a bunch of different um, oscillators in here. We have like a low bit uh, oscillator and you can switch the bit rate of that so you can get down to two bit. Uh, yeah, and then beyond that, it's got you know a standard oscillator. It's got a custom one. This one you can have one half of the waveform be one wa like one wave shape, and then you can switch it to whichever one you'd like. Um, oh, and, cool. then, and then another type, and then once you have that, you can also affect the duty of the whole thing. Oh, very both, cool. So you can get it to, yeah, so, and you can LFO that or have that be uh, envelope, an envelope as well. Uh, and then we have like, this is an, uh, like a wave, they call it a wave memory sim. I'm not sure if that's a common uh, name for it, but you can get into and just make a custom waveform. So you can set the position. And then you just set the level here. I'm going to steal your headphones. Yeah, go for it. Whoop. There we go. Yep, I hear it. Okay, cool. Oh, okay. Okay, yeah, so if you get in there, and then you can, yeah. So oh, there's your detune. So it tells you your knobs right here. Yep. Like one, two, three, four. Mm -hmm. So you can see that. So that's these yeah. knobs right here. Yes, that's what I like about it. It's really quick to program. It's like, you can just look, okay, that's one, two, three, four. And then you see these dots over here. That means there's additional menus available. So you just tap that button again and you can switch into the menu and it's gonna show another four parameters that you can uh, switch. So in this one, it has like a modern one and then a classic, which has like more 8-bit kind of aliasing uh, character in it. And then these are the four slots for your uh, effects. So there's, uh, you can get pretty crazy with the modulation stuff because you have two sets of modulation. So you could have like a phaser and a chorus happening. Uh, the tape delay sounds really, really good. Um, so if you keep tapping this one, it'll go down to the tape. And it acts like how you would expect a tape delay. So if you hit like, if you change the delay time, it'll, it'll uh, adjust to that. So if you're playing a note, It'll like wig out the uh, the pitch of it. Very cool. So if we turn this up, get it to. And if you want to hear it without the reverb, I mean, it, it sounds really raw and good even without like any reverb at all, which I think is a good test for a synth like this. Very cool. <laughs> then you can do this. Here's your mix, dry. Yep. All right, so this is Sonicware, yep. NAM 2020. Definitely go check out that Kickstarter. That's crazy. How, what's the price point on the ELZ one? Um, I think this one is 499 right now. Uh, yeah, it's available in the U.S., Europe, and in Japan. Very. Cool. Uh, let me confirm the price point. What's the price point in the U.S. for the ELZ one? 599. Yeah, so it's 599 right now in the U.S. Very cool. And it's all aluminum. Like, people were asking us at first if this was plastic. It's all aluminum. It's aluminum construction. Oh, wow. It's not plastic. So, it's uh, It's it light. It's a... light, but it's solid. Yeah. That's cool. Don't abuse it, but it could take the abuse. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> very nice. All right, cool. This is Flux of Flux with it.com. Checking out Sonicware at NAM 2020. Yep.